section 3.2, the derivative as a function, as a new function. What we will do in this section, we will try to define derivative in terms of x, in terms of the independent variable, which means we will create a new function. We still will hold the basic, the, the initial definition of the derivative, the limit definition, and still derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Derivative represents the rate of change at one point, instantaneous rate of change. And that's mean nothing change. We will just look at this limit definition through different lengths. Okay, that means that was the definition from the previous sections, previous, previous section. F prime, that's the derivative at the point A, F prime at A is the limit as H goes to zero, F of A plus H minus F of A over H. And we know that this box, this difference quotient represents the difference in Y's, difference in X. Um, the, the rate of this is the slope, slope of the secant line. This is changes in y. <clears throat> this is h, changes in x uh, coordinates between point P and point Q. But when we make, when we decided that h must be almost zero, significantly close to zero, arbitrarily close, then we creating uh, um, slope of the tangent line, and that's the derivative. Okay, and of course, A, the point A is the point which I can call it X, but this point is a given point. The point F, uh, A, F of A is the point on the, on the curve. The, the point which uh, belongs to the domain of the function, it is the point on the function. And what we will do now, we will let this point A, actually that's what I just did, vary. And instead of saying A, the exact point A, I want this point to be here, or maybe, maybe here, maybe here. We may draw a tangent line for this continuous curve everywhere. Instead of saying A, because A, it is like a constant, I will replace A with the variable, independent variable. I think that's the only difference for now. Let's see, I have the same thing, but I will say X, X plus H, X plus H, X plus H. And now all, all of the A's, they will become a variable, they will vary. And now we do have a definition of the derivative in terms of x. f prime of x is the derivative of the function f, like in general, it's defined as a new function because the answer, we remember we did one example like in terms of a, instead of having a constant number, like I will say a is five, or in this case, x is five, then we will get constant. But if I am saying that x is x, just a variable, we will get a new function, the expression in terms of x. And everything stays the same. The whole procedure of evaluating this limit, we'll, we will hold it. We will, we will keep it. Okay, and let's practice. Let's see a couple of notes. Just a yeah, just couple of notes. Uh, given any number x for which this limit exists, we assign to x the number f prime of x. Of course, we be the new function. Mm, yeah, it's called the new function. It's called, of course, derivative. We know this. Uh, it's still geometrically still. It's the slope of the tangent line. I really would like my students to know that derivative is the slope of the tangent line at the given point, at the x. And we can now say x. Uh, we can also say that it's called derivative because it's de derived, derived from f, derived from the function. Uh, domain for the new function, for the derivative, we may hold the same domain like for the original function. Occasionally, the domain could be smaller. 
because as this definition, this definition, this process will give us different formula and sometimes the domain is smaller. We basically will be like missing a couple of numbers or we will be forced to not accept them because arithmetically we will get, for instance, zero in the denominator or negative number under the square root. Okay. Now let's try. If f of x is x, find the formula f prime of x. I did type the limit definition the long way, but if I will ask my students now, what is the derivative of f of x, um, f of x equal to x for the function x? I know I don't, I know you can't answer me, but you may pause the video, you may think, you may, you may answer now, okay? And I know that you will answer one. Derivative is one. And if I will ask you why the derivative is one, I know that you will be saying because of the slope, slope of the line. Actually, I can draw it. I will draw it in a minute, a little bit bigger graph. Slope of the line x is one and slope is the derivative still. Okay, I do have a limit definition. Limit as h goes to zero, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. We will evaluate for the given function. In place of x, we will put x plus h because that's what the input is telling me. And instead of x, we will put x, then we will have x. And simplifying x minus x zero, h over h one, we do have that one. No? Now I have the room to draw a little bit bigger. Oh, it's supposed to be zero. Okay. Line is x and slope. Slope is one. And when we have a linear function, mx plus b, what is the derivative? It's basically slope, m. Yeah? We don't have to use any formulas. We don't have to use the limit unless we are asked to provide the limit definition. Okay, example number two. Let's find the formula. Oh, actually, let's just, let's just come back. We can see it's m is constant because the line doesn't change. The slope of this line is not changing. For every single x, we have the same changes. One, one run, one rise, one run, one rise. Or if we go two runs, two rise. Okay, now we have a function x squared parabola and we have to find the formula for the slope of the tangent line at any point from the domain. And that this means formula for the f prime of x. We know that function, quadratic function, it's parabola. And when we will draw a slope of the tangent here or here, or maybe at zero is zero, of course, because it's horizontal, we can see the slopes are changing. It means slope will definitely depend wherever we are, x sub one, x sub two, zero, let's say, x sub three, and so on. I mean, we would like to get the formula with respect to x, and this will still represent the slope. Okay, and it's changing, yeah? it's not a constant. Definition, now let's evaluate this definition for function x squared. In place of x, we will put x plus h squared and then x squared. And now substituting, of course, h zero right away, we're getting zero over zero. All right, we will expand oh, my writing. We will expand x plus h squared foil. And we may notice similar, the same term, opposite sign. Now, 2xh plus h squared, h is a common factor and we can cancel that out. Yeah. 2x plus h, now h, can be considered as a small number, zero, two x. Yeah, that's mean derivative. F prime of x for the function x squared is two x. Now I can even remove these numbers and let's say this is negative two, this is negative one, one and two. 
testing, we can easily compute slope for negative two, the slope at x negative two will be negative four because we are just multiplying by two. For negative one, the slope of the tangent will be negative two. And this slope will be two, this slope will be four and so on. Okay? But we have a formula in terms of x, two x, for x squared is two x. Okay, oh, another one, x cubed, the same thing, limit, definition of the derivative, let's evaluate f of x plus h in place of x, I will put x plus h cube minus x cube. I mean, this is what I will want from you. That's the f prime in terms of the limit definition. Let's expand x plus h cube means x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. When you foil everything, we will get this. We can subtract x cube minus x cube, factor out h, the h is gone, and we can substitute zero, zero. Now, three x squared. This is derivative of x cube. And the same thing. It represents the slope of the tangent line for the value x. But we have the formula three x squared for x cube. Let's do another one, one over x. Let's find the formula for the derivative. Derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Definition, evaluation for the given function instead of x, in place of x, I will put x plus h, one over x plus h minus one over x. Let's simplify. Oh, what we did, we multiply each term I multiply each term by x times x plus h because that's the denominator. When we multiply the first fraction, only x will stay. This is that x. When we multiply the second fraction, let's see this one, x will be gone, x plus h will stay. That's the x plus h, just algebra. And denominator, we will not distribute, we will basically kick. Let me show this multiplication and this. Keep the product because we don't want to distribute h. h is that common, I mean, that's the zero and we would like to cancel out. Okay, x minus x zero, negative h, negative of course. And the zero is gone, we can cancel out now. Now we can substitute zero instead of x negative one over x squared, ah, interesting. This is the formula for the derivative of the function at one over x. Do I have the graph? I don't have the graph, but, and we may notice x squared, it will be always positive. Negative one will give us always negative derivative. So we will always have negative slope. If it's negative slope of the tangent line, or maybe we can call slope of the curve, we can say that function is decreasing. And actually it is. Yeah, we can see that's another like conclusion. That's one over x hyperbola in the first and the third quadrant. And wherever I will draw a tangent, the slope is negative. Yeah, we can see based on our formula. Okay. Um, Okay, let's try this. We have function x cubed minus x. We can try to find the formula for the uh, derivative. Uh, we don't, we know, we will learn in a minute the rule, but we can use, we can, of course, we can, we can, let's use, let's first of all use the definition. That's what we, we, we learn. That's what is our tool and we can figure out one rule. That means we, instead of me saying, we can figure out. Okay, uh, definition f of x plus h minus f of x over h, h goes to zero. Instead of x, in place of x, this one and this one, I have to put x plus h. x plus h, no, oh, it's not, cube minus x plus h, minus, and this is f of x. 
let's expand everything, x plus h cube, and then distribute negative and distribute negative. We can see this and this is negative, and this and this x will be gone. All of the terms at left, they include h, common factor. Let's factor out and cancel out. Now we can consider h to be zero, arbitrary close, I mean almost zero. Uh, zero, zero, the formula is 3x squared minus one. And we did have a function x cubed, and we just did the derivative of x cubed. It was 3x squared. And of course, derivative of negative x, the slope is negative one. I mean, the rule that I was referring to is that when we have expanded form and we are asked to find the derivative, we can simply find the derivative of one term and then derivative of the other. Based on the previous examples, we could even give the answer 3x squared minus one. That's the derivative. Okay, but we prove it using the limit. And, oh, okay, and I have the graph. Let's compare the graphs because we can definitely draw x cubed minus x is the third degree polynomial. We have x intercept 0, 1, negative 1. And this is the derivative, of course, new function. It's parabola, open uh, up and shifted one units down. Let's look at the connection. Okay, that means this is function x cubed minus x, one, zero, negative one. You will draw it if I will give you a couple of minutes. And three x squared minus one. Mm, and that's the zeros. Uh, I don't want to, yeah, because we have to take the square root. Okay. But now what is important? Important is the connection. How does blue curve and the pink curve, the function and its derivative are related? Of course, they are related through the slope of the tangent. In looking at the function, wherever I will draw the slope of the tangent, that slope will be the value for the below graph. And we may start with horizontal, slope is zero. And let's check, the value is zero. Slope of the tangent is zero because that's horizontal. The value for this x, it is zero, it's x-intercept. Now, when I draw this tangent, this tangent, this, it's a huge, it's really steep, steep values, steep, this, this means big number big positive, big positive, and it's approaching horizontal. It's getting less steep. And we can see big numbers, big numbers, big numbers, and approaching zero. Mm -hmm. Definitely slope is positive. On this part, slope is positive. Derivative is above the x-axis, positive. Okay, now from that zero, from that point, um, function is decreasing, decreasing. We have slope zero and then a little bit negative and then again zero. As we can see, function is decreasing. Each slope will be negative. The values of the slope, that's the values from zero to zero. And respectively, slope is on this side is again positive, less steep, a little bit more and huge. And we can see less value, lower value, a little bit higher, and huge numbers. And again, derivative is positive, positive. It's because function is increasing, slope is positive, derivative is placed above the x-axis. Okay? It means they are definitely strongly connected through the slope of the tangent to the original function. OK. Um, Find the derivative of the function square root of x and state the domain of the derivative. Okay, the same process that we just did. Limit f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And what we have, let's evaluate for the square root of x. In place of x in the formula, we will put x plus h and then x. 
we know that we have to multiply by the conjugate expression when we have root. Um, distributing the top, we will get x plus h minus x gone. And then the common factor, the most important zero is gone. And now the h is zero. We have root x plus root x, two root x, one over two root x. Okay, this is the derivative of the square root of x. You will probably hear me really often saying derivative of the square root of x is one over two root x. And the same, we have the graphs. I didn't place them underneath, but we may, yes, we may figure out. This is function, right? This is function, square root of x. And all of the values of the slope of the tangent, that's the points that we can plot on the derivative uh, plane and connect it. And we may notice almost really big number because this tangent is almost, almost vertical. It's not, it's not vertical, but it's huge. And we can see huge values, huge numbers, really high. And then the slope is getting smaller. The, ta the tangent line is getting less steeper, less steeper. It will be never horizontal, will never reach zero, but the numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, almost zero. I mean, we can definitely see derivative y prime, uh, which this is the formula, but makes sense. And with respect to the domain, domain of the function, domain of the original function, where all of the positive numbers, including zero. But now, domain of the derivative are also positive numbers, but we're not including zero because we cannot put zero x zero doesn't make derivative doesn't exist at zero. That fraction doesn't exist at zero. Okay, also I would like to show you the other notations, okay? Okay, that means first of all, we know y prime, f prime. That's the most frequent that we will use, especially for the one variable function. We may also see this notation dy dx. Okay? This is Leibniz notation. That's how this mathematician, um, the father, of course, of, uh, of, the, of calculus, uh, along with other mathematicians, for instance, Riemann, <laughs> Um, dy dx, first of all, uh, we have to remember it's not exactly a fraction. It's not exactly a fraction. It's just tell, telling me that dy, derivative of y with respect to x. Maybe this notation is similar. Derivative of the function f of x with respect to x because we differentiating, we're finding the rate of change with respect to the independent variable x. It's important. Later, we will take this dy dx and we will kind of split this. We will call dy separately and dx. We will call differentials. But for now, we have to remember it's not exactly, not exactly fraction. It's just, just the notation, dy dx, different notation. And it's nice notation because it's telling me y function and x um, independent variable. And if we would like to have the derivative at the certain point, we remember slope, we can use dy dx notation and we can indicate that at the end, instead of x, we will put a, and just the notation. I also have another notation, d f of x, but this one is more like for different, maybe, the, oh, I don't have the other one, for uh, multivariable calculus, because we can have f of x, but we can still maybe differentiate with respect to y, z, uh, yes, different, different, uh, different things. But probably the first y prime, f prime, dy, dx, that will be the most frequent notations. Okay. And now what I would like to do, I would like to spend a couple of minutes at the end of this session to finally um, 
get some patterns, get some formulas. Okay, because I know, I know during the session, you yeah, students always want to use the formulas, formulas. But I believe I mentioned that formulas we can learn like in a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes, we can use it, and we also can forget in a couple of minutes after the semester is over. But when we really got, when we really understand the concept, it will stay forever. That's what I wish for my students. And that was the reason that I really want you still to remember like the definition, the limit definition, and know the meaning behind this. Derivative, instantaneous rate of change, slope of the touch. But yes, to speed up our calculation and to use this derivative as a tool and compute all of these changes, we need some faster tools. So I mean, what we will do, we will start with the power function x to the power of n. And at the moment, we will focus on n is positive because that's the power function. If n is a positive integer, x to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's the power function. Let's find out how quickly we can figure out what is the formula for the derivative. Depends on n, depends on the power. Let's see. I wish you will help me, but you can pause the video and answer my question quietly, okay? So I mean, I have the first function, x to the power of one, power function. What is the derivative? I know that you are watching this session and you answering one. Oh, I use this notation, dy dx. Derivative is one because of the slope. Okay, the second power function that I took, x squared. This one we can't really guess because slope is changing for the parabola at every single x, but we did the limit notation you know, a couple of slides before and we got two x. We also did x cubed. We got x a free x squared. We didn't do x to the power of four, but we can probably figure out the pattern. If, if the power, if the exponent is two, we may notice what's happened. This exponent become a coefficient and the original exponent is lower by one. When this was x cubed, the cube, the exponent become a coefficient and that two came from the original exponent lower by one, even x to the power of one, which I don't like uh, looking at this as a formula, but let's find the pattern one and x to the power of zero, right? Everything works. Of course, slope, slope. Okay, that's me now, x to the power of four, you may pause the video and answer the question. What is the derivative of x to the power of four? Four x to the power of three. And now any positive integer will give us x to the power of n, n is the n positive integer, or n, we will always place that exponent as a coefficient, and then that original exponent is subtracted. We have to subtract one. This is our first formula and we will call power rule. Power rule. Derivative, we can see nicely, we can use this notation. Derivative of this function with respect to x, dx, is equal to n x to the power of one number less, n minus one. And also, we did extend this, n could be actually any number, any, any real number, not only, not only like the, the proper power function, which n is a positive integer. For instance, when I have a function one over x, this is actually not power function, it's a rational function, but we may rewrite this as a x to the negative one. So I mean, we actually representing this in the power form and we may apply power rule. X to the negative one, derivative is negative one, X and the original exponent is less by one. Negative X to the negative two, negative 
over x squared. We did this, you may check the previous slides, we did this derivative through the limit definition. Now we use the formula. We also did derivative with respect to x square root of x. It's also not a power function, but we may rewrite in the power form. x square root of x is x to the power of one half. Then one half will become, the, the exponent will become coefficient and original exponent minus one. One half x to the negative half. One half x to the negative half is half square root in the denominator. And we remember derivative of the square root of x is one over two square root of x. So we now, of course, we can use, yeah, that's our recipe, that's our rule, rule, we will use it, but please don't overuse. Always think, always be like, uh, like rational. <laughs> If, if as soon as you can use the slope of the curve, please, yeah, please say, yes, I know what's, what's the derivative of 2x, 3x, 4x, just 2, 3, 4, respectively, for instance. Okay. Also, let's look at a couple of rules. When we will differentiate a constant times a function, c is a constant, and function is function f of x is differentiable function, which we know that derivative exists. Okay, that means what we can do, we can simply take this constant and just outside, we can take completely outside and focus on the derivative of the function. This rule probably is extremely easy. We don't even, we will not even think that we're using, but the only common mistake is to say the derivative of the constant is zero, but the derivative of just constant. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we have derivative of five, five is a constant. Constant function is a horizontal line. Slope of the horizontal is zero. But when we will have derivative of five x squared, then we keeping that because that's different. That's the function. That is a part of the function, but for the explicit way to get the derivative, we can keep five. We can focus on x squared. Derivative of x squared is 2x, it's 10x. Okay, this is the derivative. And I know that we will multiply right away. Two times five, 10, 10x. Okay, but that's the constant multiple rule. Also, we have uh, addition and subtraction, the sum rule and the difference. We also did through the limit definition when we have expanded form f plus g, f minus g, then derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. Derivative of the difference of two functions is the difference of two derivatives. And also, I will not prove it because we, I mean, we did, I believe we compute that limit, but derivative of the natural exponential function, I would like you to know this, e to the x is just the same, just the function itself. And this is always nice. And I did at the bottom, you can see, I did the limit definition, derivative of e to the x and limit as h goes to zero, e, to the x plus h, because this is the part f of x plus h minus f of x over h. When we have addition, we can multiply. Then we have e to the x, e to the x. e to the x with respect to this limit is constant. We can place outside e to the x times this limit. But this limit, it is proved in section 2.5. Uh, we don't have to exactly know how to get this limit because we need a couple of rules, but this limit is one. And then e to the x times one is e to the x. Okay. You may check section 2.5. Okay. We almost, yes, we almost done. Uh, let's, let me just, for, for now, we have to just know that derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then I have last question. 
let's find the derivative of g of t. I just, I just changed the uh, independent variable for t. And we have t to the negative 3, 2 times root t, minus t to the negative 4 over 5, plus 5 e to the t. Expanded form, we know that we can differentiate term by term. Of course, we don't need to use the limit definition. This will be oh crazy. OK, let's start. g prime of t. For this one, I will use the power rule. Negative 3, I will uh, place in front. And then let me one second. OK, mm. Okay. t to the negative 3, negative 3 t and negative 3 I will I, from that original exponent, I will subtract 1, then 2. This is t to the power of 1 half, unless we remember derivative of square root of t is 1 over 2 root t. We did this before twice. OK, that means I can take advantage of this. Now this one t to the negative 4 over 5. Negative 4 over 5 will be placed as a coefficient. And then t, an original power, original exponent, negative 4 over 5, we have to subtract 1. And then plus, copy constant 5, derivative of e to the t is e to the t. We did it. But let's make a little bit nicer because that's not a good way to leave the final answer. Negative 3, 2 to the negative 4. 2 and 2 is cancel out, 1 over square root of t. Negative and negative is positive, and t to the power of 9 over 5. This one will stay without the change. One more step because we really like to get to provide the final answer without negative exponent. This 4 over 5 t to the power of 9 over 5, because it's in the denominator, and without the negative, and 5 e to the t. Wow, of course, that's crazy function. We will not even draw it, we will not analyze, but for this also represents the slope of the tangent line. Yeah, for the certain t, we can substitute. Um, we can figure out the domain. Actually, we can figure out. We have square root. Domain of the function is positive numbers and not including 0, because we have negative exponent, 1 over t cubed, 1 over. OK? We have the domain. And we can actually, just to finalize, we can get the domain of the derivative positive numbers because of the square root and not zero. Actually, the derivative domain, domain for the derivative stays the same. Okay, thank you very much.